everyone. Thanks for stopping by to check out my video today. My name's Eric, and today I'm going to show you how to make some delicious smoked pulled pork. Now, my wife got me a pit barrel cooker for my birthday earlier this month, and this is going to be my second cook on it. I did an overall unboxing review as well as cooking some uh, back ribs on it. I'll leave a link below uh, to a video I did on that. I was very impressed how those ribs came out. But today I decided for my second cook, I was gonna try some delicious pulled pork. Another reason that made me motivate to try this next was because my wife bought me these wonderful bear claws, which are used to shred the pork when you're done cooking it. So of course I had to check these out. Uh, they're nice and sharp, they're like mini knives on here. Uh, the reviews I read online are very positive, so I'm looking forward to try this. But anyway, I got a couple here. I got one seven pounds, one eight pounds. I picked these up at Sam's Club. You can pick them up at your grocery store. You want to ask for a pork shoulder, or sometimes it's called um, Boston butt. But it's a relatively inexpensive meat, and we're going to cook this low and slow. We're going to uh, hang it with the hooks in the pit barrel cooker. Uh, until it reaches around 160 to 170 degrees, which I'm guessing three to five hours. And then after that, we're going to wrap them up in foil with a little bit of liquid, and we're going to put them back on the cooker, and we're going to bring them up to around 200 to 203 degrees, let it rest for a while, and we're going to have some delicious smoked pulled pork. So super easy, minimal ingredients. Let me kind of walk you through this. I'm going to unwrap these, rinse them off with cold water, uh, dry them off with a paper towel and I'll show you the next step and how we get these prepared ready to put them on the cooker in just a second. So you see here I have it unwrapped, I rinsed it off, blotted it off with a paper towel. Now I'm going to be putting it with uh, some honey garlic rub. This is one of my uh, wife's favorite. Adds a little bit of sweetness to it with the garlic which we both love. Uh, this doesn't have too much salt in it. Salt is the third ingredient. So what I'm going to do before I apply a mustard base and the honey garlic rub is I'm just going to put a little bit of kosher salt on both of these just on the outside and let that soak uh, soak in for maybe 10-15 minutes. The salt is good. I just got regular kosher salt and we don't want to go crazy here. Just a light coating just to kind of give it a little bit of time to have some of this uh, kind of soak into the meat. And now if you have time, ideally, I should have done this last night and let it sit overnight in the fridge, maybe, you know, um, 6 to 12 hours, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Just a little bit of salt like this, you know, nothing, uh, nothing crazy, just a little bit on the outside, all the way around on all four sides, just a light coating of salt, and that's it. So I'm going to finish doing it to this other one here, and I'm just going to let them sit on the counter, kind of come up to room temperature, for around 10 15 minutes then I'll be back show you how to apply the rub I'll see you in one second so these have been sitting around 15 minutes I put the salt like I showed you now I'm just going to put some basic yellow mustard you don't have to use yellow mustard you could use uh, olive oil uh, just you what we're trying to do here is just give it a little bit of moisture so this uh, rub will stick so just like that we're gonna rub some mustard on there just a nice coat all the way around. Get a little bit more. Doesn't have to be too much. Just a light coating, like I said. I like using mustard because it seems it doesn't really alter the flavor that much. I think it helps the uh, the pork taste a little bit better. It's got a little bit of vinegar in the mustard. I think it helps uh, tenderize the meat. At least that's what I've heard. So that's it. Then we're going to take the rub. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on here. And uh, we can be pretty generous with it. What I'm going to do is just let this sit for another 10, 15 minutes. And come up to room temperature. I'm going to finish doing both of these. In the meantime, I'm going to go outside, fire up that pit barrel cooker, get the charcoal basket going. We'll be back in a little bit when we're about ready to put these on the pit barrel cooker. See you then. So as you can see, I got them both uh, coated with mustard and the uh, dry rub applied. I put the hooks from the pit barrel cooker, one on each side. We're just going to hang these on the rebarbs. 
inside the paint barrel. Make sure you put them in there as strong as possible. I'm just going to let these sit out there. I'm going to go outside, fire that thing up. I'll meet you outside in just a minute. All right, I've had these coals going for just about 15 minutes. I'm going to pour them on the coals in the bottom basket there, and uh, we'll be back in a second. All right, here we go. Some nice hot coals. Those poured evenly in the basket here. There we go. Get the rebarb in there. I got a. Uh, I got a dual temperature gauge here. I'm going to put one on each cork shoulder just to monitor the temperature. We want it to get somewhere between 160 and 170 before we pull it through the foil. Not quite sure how long that's going to take, but let me just uh, put the cover on it real quick while I go inside, grab the pork. We'll be back in a second. All right, you see I got both of them hanging in there. Around five minutes before I hung these up, I did throw some hickory and apple wood chips on the bottom there. And uh, that's it, guys. Put the lid on there. I got a thermometer in each pork. Right now, one's 57 degrees, one's 52. I just stuck them in there. We are set. I'm not even going to come look at this here. We're just going to let this go. Uh, I'll say at least... Probably three hours minimum. I mean, of course, I'll monitor the temperatures, and if it uh, needs my attention or if it hits 160 faster than I expect, I'll definitely come out here and check it out. But uh, the hard part's done. Now I'll just let this sit here. I'm going to go inside, enjoy the rest of my uh, late morning, early afternoon. We'll be back in a few hours. Check this out as the afternoon progresses. See you guys in a little bit. Well, it's been just over two hours and around 20 minutes. Uh, right now, it's reading, let's take a look here, one of them, well actually they're both reading at 132 degrees, well one just clicked to 133, so let's take a look, see how the bark's looking on these. <clears throat> wow, oh it smells wonderful. Oh my goodness, look at that bark. There's a lot of juices collecting up on top. It looks wonderful. Fire's still going good down there. Some nice heat being generated. Okay, guys. We're almost there. We're going to go for probably another hour, maybe hour and a half, till it hits one, between 160 and 170. We'll be done giving it the smoke, and we'll wrap it in foil. So see you back in a little bit here. Well, while I have a little bit of time to wait till it's time to wrap those uh, pork shoulders, I'm going to try a new beer here. Point of the Way IPA by Golden Road Brewing Company out of all places, Los Angeles, California. I've never had a beer that was actually made in Los Angeles, California, but seeing how I live in Orange County, a suburb of Los Angeles, I thought I would try these. They have a couple different varieties. I happen to pick this one because it's 5.9% alcohol. I kind of like to play on names. Point the way IPA. I don't know anything about it, so this will be uh, new for me. <clears throat> Thanks again, guys, for watching my video. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to some delicious food later on. Cheers. Okay. Smell a little bit of bitterness, a little citrus. Typical of an IPA, maybe a little lemon orange. Okay, let's give it a shot here. Oh, it's very crisp. It's got a heavier carbonation than I'm used to from an IPA. Aftertaste of malt, but it is very crisp, very refreshing. Not really bitter, not as bitter as it smells. Oh, it's good. You can definitely taste a little bit of the fruit flavor, a little bit of it tastes like uh, orange, lemon, citrusy. Now, it doesn't have your traditional punch 
of a good strong IPA, but it's a pretty decent brew, I have to say. Especially considered that they brewed it in Los Angeles. I guess they do know how to make beer out here after all. <laughs> well, I'm going to sit here in this beautiful afternoon, sit here, wallow in this uh, delicious smoke coming from my pit barrel cooker with that uh, pork. Uh, right now, one's reading at 140, one's reading at 142. So we got around 20 to 25 more degrees. Probably take another 45 minutes to an hour. I'm in no rush. I'm going to enjoy my beer, guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back in a little bit. Uh, I'll show you what to do when these hit uh, between 160, 165, when we wrap them up in foil and get them ready for that final stage, that final cooking uh, stage. So see you guys in a little bit. Cheers. All right, it's been four hours exactly. I'm getting uh, temperature readings. Uh, they're around 10 degrees apart. I'm just going to do some spot checks and see. I think they're about ready to be wrapped. I apologize, but uh, the timing's not right. The landscaping guys are on our street going nuts with the blower. So let's see what we're doing here. Man, the bark looks absolutely wonderful. Okay, this is reading 162, which is perfect. Let's stick it in this one here. 161 162 i'll spot check it a couple places but that's what we're shooting for we're shooting between 160 to 170. mainly you want to make sure it has the bark that you're happy with and i'm very happy with this this man it looks wonderful i can still see a lot of juices there this is going to be nice now we're going to wrap it in foil we're going to put a, i'm going to put a little beer in the in the foil wrap it really tight <clears throat> And then put it back in here on the grate, and that's going to allow that uh, that beer and that moisture to kind of steam the meat a little bit, get it nice and tender, bring it up to 200 degrees. I'm going to go get a tray from the kitchen, take these off. I'll meet you inside, show you how to wrap them up. I just wanted to show everyone how these look fresh out of the smoker. I took the hooks out. Man, they smell wonderful. Beautiful looking bark. Lots of juice in there still, but we got to bring it up to around 200 degrees. So... You want to take some heavy duty aluminum foil. Let me show you how we do this with the one. Look at my dog Dixie do. Barking at something as usual. All right, so we take one, stick it there. Now what I do is I put a little bit of the uh, rub back on there just for a little bit more flavor. <clears throat> just a little bit. All right. I'm going to fold this up a little bit because I don't want any of the liquid to fall out. I'm just going to take some beer, pour it around here in the bottom. This point the way IPA. It doesn't need to be a whole lot because there's going to be some juices that are coming from this, but uh, just enough to get it started, as they say. All right, that should be sufficient. Okay, you want to just wrap it nice and tight. Try not to kink anything. And just to make double, double sure, I wrap it once the other way. There you go. Perfect. I'll wrap the other one and I'll meet you outside when we throw this uh, back on the pit barrel cooker. See you in a minute. All right, here we are. We're back. So we'll just throw these on. It's a little bit easier if I take one of these out. Ah. Uh. the rods in there to help circulate the, the proper airflow. 
There we go. And uh, let's take the temperature probes here. Let's see. All that foil into the meat. Perfect. So one here. Perfect. So there you have it, guys. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. We've had four hours up to this point. I'm figuring probably two to four more, maybe five. No telling uh, exactly. But you know what? Again, it uh, doesn't matter. I'm happy they're sticking in there. It's going to be delicious. So we'll just go. You see right now I just turned on the the thing and you can see first one is reading 162 one's reading 158 I'll put this up to around 200 degrees the temperature set and it'll beep when it's ready so uh, I'm gonna go enjoy another beer enjoy my afternoon we'll see you guys in a little bit when these are ready to come off all right guys it's been around six and a half hours the one, uh, my alarm just went off. It's a 205, it's saying. The other one's at 189. Kind of tells you how different pork shoulders will cook differently. I mean, even if they're the same size, they will. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check the temperature and see. I'm not even sure which one's which here. <clears throat> so let's just uh, take a couple readings here, see what's going on. Okay, this one over here. 198. Okay, that one looks like the one that's done. There we go. We're at 202, 203. See, a little bit warmer in 203. Perfect. This one must be the one that's not quite done. Oh, no, it's going down. No? Oh, well, maybe they're both. 203. Well, you know what? 208, that's definitely done. 209, okay, that's definitely done. Okay, this is the one, I guess, that's not... And 194, well, you know what? 194 will work, too, if parts of it here are obviously warmer. You know what? They're done. I'm going to take them off. Now, what you got to do here, you have to... Whatever you do, you don't want to just start shredding these immediately. They're going to have to rest. Keep them rested in the foil. I'm just going to put them in a pan in the foil, and I'm just going to stick them in the oven. You know, it's kind of isolate. You can put them in, a, in a, um, an ice chest. Uh, you can even leave it on the counter. Some people wrap it up in a towel. Whatever you want to do. Um, but you just want to kind of let it sit at least for a half hour. If you can go... Uh, 45 minutes to an hour even better just let it rest let all those juices kind of uh, soak back into the meat and uh, yeah so you could just let it do its thing you definitely want to let it do its thing for at least a half hour but anyway I'll take these off I'm just gonna put them in a pan stick them in the oven we'll be back in uh, probably around an hour when I'm ready to shred these up so here we are I pulled it out you know it's done when the bones come pulling out nice and clean no effort whatsoever these claws are also good for lifting them out of the foil uh, this one kind of fell apart because it's just so tender you definitely want to try to save the juice you can see all the juice here after i shred this i'm going to add a little bit of that moisture in it and then of course when you want to uh, store it put it in a plastic bag or a food saver bag and uh, Put the shredded pork and add a little bit of that liquid it freezes great you can just heat it up in a saucepan or microwave and it it's it's uh, stores wonderfully in the freezer so here we go guys i'm just going to start shredding this up you guys can take a look at it here oh my goodness <laughs> look at that nice smoke ring now there's going to be pieces of fat in here, obviously, and after you shred it down to nice uh, manageable sizes, you want to remove the big globs of fat. You know, you're going to add some of that liquid in there for flavor, so. Wow, this looks delicious. Okay, anyway, I'm going to have to uh, give it a quick try here. Let's see. Oh. 
see a little bit of that uh, smoke ring on there. Mmm. Wow. Really good. Really juicy. Wow. Let me finish shredding this. I'll be back in a second. I want to show you how to make a perfect pulled pork sandwich. We'll be back in one second. Here we go. I shredded uh, all that pork shoulder, put it in two separate containers. Look at how wonderful this looks. You want to try to shred it uh, with the bark and some of the smoky pieces. Ah, uh, so delicious, so juicy. Like I was telling you earlier, this stuff stores wonderfully. Put it in a Ziploc freezer bag or a food saver if you have a vacuum sealer. Add some of that liquid, seal it up, stick it in the freezer for months. You're looking for something to eat, pull it out, throw it in a, uh, either in a crock pot or you can do it on a stove top in a, in a uh, pan or even in the microwave. Heats right up wonderfully. You can even crisp it a little bit in the oven if you want to get it a little bit crispy. But man, delicious. I'll be back in, in just a second. I want to show you how to make a delicious uh, barbecue smoked pork sandwich. I'll be back in a second to show you guys how that how that uh, is put together. Welcome back, guys. I just wanted to show you here. I freeze big packs like this for the whole family, like I said, with a little bit of the juice. And then also little individual packs, you know, just maybe for one person. And like I said, seal them or even put them in a freezer bag. This could last three, four months easy in the freezer. So here we go, pick a nice bun of your choice. I like to put a little bit of barbecue sauce on the bottom, just to kind of, you know, give it a little bit of uh, moisture. And of course, you use the barbecue sauce of your choice. I like Chris and Pitts here. All right, it's a local brand, if you've seen some of my other smoking videos. Now we're just gonna put some of this delicious smoked cold pork that we just Got done making on the pit barrel cooker. Look at that. And I like to put a little bit more sauce on top. Not too much. Some people like to toss the sauce. But I like just to put a little bit on top. Keep it dry and moist with the flavors. Now one thing I forgot to mention when I put the beer in it earlier. You don't have to use beer if you don't like beer. You can use uh, chicken stock. Some people use apple juice. Anything just to put a little moisture in it. And last but not least, we do a little bit of coleslaw. Just to kind of give it that crisp contrast to the delicious smoky pork. And there you go, guys. The perfect pulled pork sandwich. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please like my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Check out some of my other videos. I'll be doing some more featuring the pit barrel cooker. And uh, hope to see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Bye.